Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk, as we continue on in our look at the whole armor of God, putting on the whole armor of God, how a well-dressed Christian should look like, what a well-dressed Christian should look like. So, we're getting, we're even, yes, getting the action right in there, yeah. Um, just remember that the purpose of this is that we might know how to stand fast against the schemes, the wiles, the attacks of the enemy, the devil, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we put on the armor, okay? It's about warfare. We have to be able to successfully stand against the enemy. And remember, what we're talking about when the enemy, we're talking about the spiritual forces of wickedness. We're not talking about flesh and blood. We're not talking about people. We're talking about, because our warfare is not against flesh and blood, right? Mm -hmm. So, let's get going. We're going to pick up, last week we uh, looked at the first of those, talking about gird up your loins with truth, right? Mm -hmm. And if you missed that, it's still up on the Bible Talk website, so you can go see it. Very good. Or on YouTube, or on Facebook at In Search of Christianity. Um, it was very good. That's not a biased opinion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Because it's the Word of God, and the Word of God is always going oh, so, this week we're going to start, and we're going to look at the next one, the breastplate of righteousness. That's where we're going to start. But before we do, Brother Mark is going to ask God's blessing upon our time together in this study. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for your eternal word. Yes, it's Lord. always good in every situation, Lord. And we just thank you for not only your advice, but your co your commandments. Just Give us the wisdom to apply it to our lives. Amen. 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 And we thank you, Father, that we can come boldly with confidence before you in the name of your Son, Jesus, and that you hear those prayers. So, our faith, being disciples uh, of, of Jesus, being bondservants of the Lord, mm -hmm. Christianity is truly a matter of life and death. Absolutely. It is yeah. daily warfare, uh, and it requires a, a very, very serious attitude, a full-time commitment, full-time commitment, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Do not lose sight of the fact that this study is about warriors dressed and prepared for battle, okay? And this is the word of God to all of the disciples, all of the bond servants. You know, the, the Jews in the time, the time that this was first written, as well as Gentile believers who were coming into the, to the faith, they would have certainly known something uh, 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 from seeing the Romans about armor. Mm -hmm. And they would know something about serious guys, all right? <laughs> because remember, the legions, they wore the breastplate of the covered and protected the core of the body. And that's heart. what we're going to talk about, the heart. The center mass. The breastplate protected the heart. Primarily, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, I mean, you know, today, even in, here in the United States of America and other places that we've been overseas, you see that typically policemen, they wear bulletproof vests. Right. Now, they don't go out in full armor. They don't, other than, you know, special weapons Spons. teams and so forth. Yeah. The normal beat cop now, today, with good reason, wears bulletproof, bulletproof vest. vest. Mm -hmm. And that covers the core of his, of his body. Mm -hmm. All right? So, as I said, it protects the primary purpose is to protect the heart. Because mm -hmm. that's the most vital organ. Right. I mean, you get shot in the arm, you can live. You get shot in the heart, okay. chances are not good. All right? So, the breastplate of... God's righteousness protects the place in our lives where his love and his faith, the faith that he has given us, where they reside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it says in Romans 5.5 5, that the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the, the love is in our heart. And it says in Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart man believes. Mm -hmm. So the faith that he has given us, they reside in the heart. Now, so those are the two things that the devil really wants to attack in our Absolutely. lives, yeah. is our love and our faith. 
Let me make it perfectly clear before we go any further that when we speak of the breastplate of righteousness, we are talking about God's righteousness, his righteousness, Mm -hmm. all right? Any self-righteousness that we have will only give the illusion of protection or protection, and it will be dramatically and disastrously, it'll fail. Ineffective. If it's placed before the enemy. Mm -hmm. Or if it's placed before our God. Yes. Right? It has to be his righteousness that we're talking about. So let's let's consider this fact, first of all. In first Peter, second, I'm sorry, second Peter 1.20, it says, But know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Right? right. We can't interpret scripture, but the Holy Spirit, who is sent to lead us into all truth uses scripture to interpret scripture and to give us understanding. Therefore, we've got we've got to look at Ephesians 6:14 in light of what Paul also wrote to the church at Thessalonica. Right? Here to the Ephesians, he's writing and I say when he's writing to the Ephesians, he is writing in a way that God would use to reach the entire body of Christ, right? But he wrote about the the breastplate of righteousness. But when he wrote to the church in Thessalonica, here's what he said. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, he said, But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So, is there a contradiction there? Is is the breastplate righteousness, or is the breastplate faith and love? Or is faith and love righteousness? Well, that's exactly what the scripture is. That's what I mean. Scripture interprets scripture. Right? So the breastplate of righteousness equals the breastplate of faith and love. There's no contradiction. There's an interpretation. There's a, there's a clarification. Okay? And faith and love are the manifestation of righteousness. Our righteousness that God has given through the atoning work of Jesus. Okay? Does that... You get that? I mean, does that make sense to you? Absolutely. All right? So, listen to this from 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 3 and 4. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. There you have it again. The love of And the faith make us overcomers. And that's what this is about. Going into the battle, prepared, prepared to win, baby. Mm. Okay? Where is that scripture? That was 1 John chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. So you can see, this is a consistent message throughout the scriptures, as all scripture is. It's consistent. You'll keep seeing the same things in different ways, and they just reinforce by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Everything is being reinforced. Okay? So without true faith, the assurance of the love and the faithfulness of God, if you don't have that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose hope. Why do you think that the the Hebrews wouldn't go out onto the battlefield against the Philistines in the Valley of Allah when Goliath showed up? They didn't didn't have that faith. They didn't have that assurance. So they weren't prepared to go into the battle. David, on the other hand, had that faith. Yes, he did. Okay. So, it says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. Mm-hmm. Now, faith is the substance, the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, if there's no assurance, no confidence of the things hoped for. Well, you know what the result's going to be? Oh, good. Okay, I'll tell you. No, I won't tell you. I'll let Solomon tell you. Okay. All right? Because Solomon wrote in Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 12, he said, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. When you don't have hope, it'll make you it'll make your heart sick. It'll make you heart sick, right? Mm. There are a lot of heart sick people in this world. I mean, that's an incredible truth. Really, really heart sick. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States of America. Why? Yeah. Are you putting it in the context of what you were just talking about? If you, well, that's a good thing yeah. to do is to put it in the context because everything should be viewed and through the Word of God, yeah. right? Yeah. So when you do that, 
Now, that's that information, I mean, this is not something I'm just making up. Mm-hmm. That comes from the uh, American Heart, United States, according to the American Heart Association, mm-hmm. and to the, uh, according to the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Mm-hmm. I mean, heart disease is the number one killer in America. Why? It's because people don't have that hope of the Lord. That's right. Okay? And like you said before, that's where Satan will attack. He, you know, he attacks where you're weak. Yeah. I mean, any, any predator is going to attack where you, where you are weak, right? So he's going to attack that heart, right? Love, God's love, mm-hmm. right, leads to, well, a, again, instead of me saying it, let me read you with somebody much better than me, smarter, more spiritual, more uh, okay. Somebody else wrote, the Apostle Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 5, right? I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 5. Now, if you, listen, if you don't have time to catch all these, please have a pad, jot down these scriptures and go read them, meditate on them, pray about them, speak to the Lord about them. And I, I will say once again, test what I say. Don't take my word for anything. Check out what I'm saying. Okay? So Romans 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exult in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope, and hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Can you see? I mean, this is, yeah, this, is this is a hope machine. Yes. <laughs> and it involves that tribulation. It involves that warfare. Mm-hmm. It, in, it involves all of this. But it is because the love of God has been poured into our hearts that we have the ability to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's like a we, blueprint. Because we need to have faith that leads us to a hope that does not disappoint because of God's love. Mm-hmm. Satan will attack your heart because that is the place faith and love come together, as I said, right? For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. With his mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. The schemes of the devil and the triumph of Christ Jesus, they are clearly seen in this statement of the Lord, okay? John 10.10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Our faith and love, our breastplate that we're armed with, will fend off every effort of the enemy to attack our heart. Because you have hope, and hope does not disappoint. So when when we put on the breastplate of righteousness, Consciously being aware of what this means in our lives, you will see another of the many defeats of the devil in your life. Mm. He's going to attack yes. many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. You're going to see victory in your life. You're going to see how God will work and overcome these trials and tribulations in your life. Don't go out on improperly dressed. Yes. You should, you should hang this up by your door so when you walk out, you make sure you put on... A checklist. Right? The first thing was to gird up your loins, right? That's right. Put on that breastplate. Because if you're if you're walking in faith, mm-hmm. Satan's going to attack you. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've shared this with you before, but I'll share it real quickly. Alice and I and Mark, we lived in Central America. We lived out in the bush in Central America, a place where there are many, many dangerous, dangerous snakes. Yes. Now, we grew up in New York, in, in New York City and its suburbs. Different kind of snakes. <laughs> yeah, but there, there are no snakes here. So, I mean, we didn't have an experience. So one of the things I learned down living in the jungle and many other places we've traveled is by and large, if you leave snakes alone, snakes will leave you alone. Mm-hmm. They don't want to eat you. You're too big mm-hmm. for the average snake, unless you find a 40-foot python or them, and that's an... Mm-hmm. Okay. Everglades, you'll find them. Yeah, but if on the other hand you step on a snake, they're going to strike, guaranteed. That not because it's a defense. Right. 
But Jesus has given us authority to tread on serpents. So you better know how to walk in victory. I'll tell you what. All right. So what's the next part of this? It says to shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Right? Now, remember, God is a God of good order, not a God of confusion. <clears throat> there, there is a reason here, and you can pray about this, as to the order of how God tells us to dress. Yes. First you put on the loin covering, then you put on the breastplate, and then you put on your shoes. <laughs> God has purpose. Yes, he does. Isaiah 52, 7. Isaiah 52, verse 7 says this. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. Okay. The preparation of the gospel. Put on shoes. The preparation of the gospel. So I have to tell you this quick little story. <laughs> Back in the early 1960s and mid-1960s, I flew in the United States Navy as, as an air crewman flying patrols up in the North, uh, North Atlantic mm -hmm. looking for those ICBMs to come flying out of Russia and et cetera. Um, we'd be on, patrol for, be on patrol for 12 hours. It was a normal patrol. And, of course, we had a couple hours going and a couple hours coming back from being on post. In other words, we had a fair amount of time. God bless you. We had a fair amount of time, you know, in that aircraft. So um, part of our full armor, the flight suit and such, okay, mm -hmm. was our flight boots. They were waterproof, weatherproof, steel-toed, mm -hmm. lace-up boots. They were part of the flight outfit, right? They were heavy, too. They were. I used to go jogging in them nice. back in those days, didn't I? Huh? <laughs> So we also had, in the, the aircraft that we flew, we had a couple of bunks in the back. When you're out 12 hours, you know, you get a chance, so you go back and take a little cat nap. And uh, we'd get an opportunity to use them and get a bit of rest. So I'd go back on those the very bumpy rides, right? I'd go back. But you never, ever take took off. the boots, boots off take while you're under. You never, ever, ever. Right. On those occasions, not too infrequent, unfortunately, that I or one of the others had to respond to something immediately on board the aircraft. Mm -hmm. You're not going to take time to work our way back into the boots and lace them up. Mm -hmm. You had to be up and ready instantly. Right. Right? As a matter of fact, when Alice and I first got married, I could not sleep without having one foot outside the blankets. So you could just jump up. So I could just flip through the blankets and, and get right up without getting tangled in the blankets. I mean, it became, it was just built into me by that time. So you got to be ready. I mean, that's why we, we kept the boots that way, right? And I mentioned it. But it says in the Word, in 2 Timothy 4, 2, that we are to preach the Word, be ready. Yes. King James says, be instant. Mm -hmm. In season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, mm -hmm. exhort with great patience and instruction. We have to be ready. We have to be instant. You can't take time and say, you know, when the devil comes and attacks, you can't say to him, well, hold on for a few minutes while I get ready for you. You have to be prepared, right? That's why what we're doing is shotting our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, so the question becomes for, for us, for all of us, I guess, have you prepared? Mm -hmm. Have you prepared the gospel in your life? Are you booted up, laced up, and ready for whatever situation or opportunity comes your way? That's a reasonable question, right? I don't, I don't believe that you can memorize the whole Bible. Although we've met a few people who've known an awful lot of that, it's, uh, but you can't. I don't believe you can memorize the whole Bible. But that said, you can put the whole Bible in. That's right. Okay. And what you have put in, the Holy Spirit can bring out mm -hmm. whenever it is needed at the moment. Because it says in Matthew ten nineteen, among other places, He said, "For it will be given you in that hour what you are to say." Mm -hmm. So if you put it in, the Holy Spirit can bring it out. Right. And what he will give you to say will likely have something to do with this life-giving truth. Remember the loin coverings? It's about giving life. We serve the Prince of Peace. So we bring the good news of the gospel to all of human-type people. 
Oh, to, okay. I yeah, so human type people and all other creatures, right. kitty cats, puppy dogs, and teddy bear. Yeah, okay. Right. All of them, friend and foe alike. Everybody around us, human type people, we bring the good news. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. It says in Ephesians, there in Ephesians, chapter two, starting in verse twelve. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Mm. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. You have to remember, okay, you have to remember that this, our battle is not against flesh and blood, okay? This is, let me throw a little Spanish in here. This is muy importante, okay? Our job, as that opening verse in this part, Isaiah 57, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him, okay? As that verse proclaimed, that it is about the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace. Our task as ambassadors, our task as people having a ministry of reconciliation, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, Mm -hmm. is to bring peace into the midst of chaos, to bring joy into the fields of misery, Mm -hmm. and most importantly, to bring life into the spiritual battlefields of death. That is what defeats the enemy, his plan, his wile, his schemes, he who came to kill. Okay? You know, I, I, I don't think this is going off subject, but I, I just really feel led to talk about this. Okay. Just just the other day, <clears throat> Alice and I saw a movie, and I know that Mark had seen oh, it before yes. us, called Hacksaw Ridge. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. If you're not, this is one of the few movies that I will ever suggest that you might want to take a look at. However, you have to warn them, it's extremely violent. You know, so is Christianity. Written, yes. Well, Christianity is very bloody. Yeah, so is Christianity. That's what I said. I mean, yeah, because it, it is about warfare. And I understand what Mark is saying. It is. It is a depiction of some of the most horrible battles in the Second World War, yes. in, the, in the South Pacific, in Okinawa specifically in this case. And it, it talks of a man whose name was Desmond Doss. And he was a conscientious, a conscientious objector here in the Second World War. That was... When they first was that the first time that ever came up? Well, it was it was relatively it's, it's new. new. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, the concept and typically soldiers don't like conscientious objectors, no, no. you know. And as as depicted in this movie, and this is a true story, absolutely yes, true absolutely story. True. Yeah. Das was seen by his comrades as a coward, yes, yeah. because he absolutely refused to pick up a gun. Wouldn't touch it. Would not touch a gun. Mm-hmm. And he said, early on in this movie, he said, while everybody else is taking life, I'm going to be saving it. That's going to be my way to serve. He said, now he was a Christian. He was a devout Christian. And what he said was that what he was, he felt the call of, he, he was going to go out and serve his, serve his country, but he was going to do it by bringing life, not by bringing death. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a message in there. There's a lesson in there. And it was in an incredibly powerful and beautiful movie, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Everybody was saying, as a matter of fact, I, I vaguely remember one of the officers or one of the top sergeants saying, you know, saying to the other soldiers in a way of punishing Doss, saying, you know, this man, he's going to go out on the battle. You're going to have to depend on him to save your life so he won't carry a gun. Well, the fact of the matter is he saved life after life after life after life. He was credited with saving the lives of 75 soldiers left for dead right. on the battlefield. Wounded. Yeah. yeah. He is the only conscientious objector in the history of the United States to win the Congressional Medal of Honor. Mm. The reason I'm bringing this up is because it is so much like what, what Paul is saying here. Yes, we are to engage in the battle, but the battle is not against those people. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, God has a plan. Our ministry, as I said, we have a ministry of reconciliation, right? We have a ministry to be ambassadors of peace. God has given the sword 
to the government mm-hmm. to deal with evildoers. Mm-hmm. That is not our ministry. Yeah. Okay? And one other thing about that, when he saved those his fellow soldiers, so, he also brought down um, some... A couple of enemy. Japanese yeah. soldiers, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why... Not, okay, uh, does this have to do with the movie? Or what well, yeah, 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 um, What I was going to say is whenever I have studied this with other people, it said, gird your loins with the truth. They never really, they've always gone to the breastplate of righteousness first. And they said that the, the, the loins is what the breastplate rests on, but they haven't talked about how that your loins are where you can reproduce. They've never gone into that. That well, was new for me. So, well, and if that's the way you've heard it before, please do me a favor and go back and, and, and watch last, last week's, week's yes. study where we talked about girding up the yeah. loins, okay? Because it is about bringing life. Yes, the loins are where the seed of life is, right. okay? And that was the first one that God chose to talk about yes. because we are like Jesus to come bringing life in his name, mm-hmm. okay? He came to bring life, yes. okay? So... Before you go out in the battle, I, I just want to give you this confidence, okay? Mm-hmm. Back in Isaiah again, God spoke to the prophet that he should speak this about the enemies of the people of God. He said, devise a plan, but it will be thwarted. State a proposal, but it will not stand, mm-hmm. for God is with us, mm-hmm. Isaiah 8.10. Bear in mind that the peace that we have that comes and protects our heart is simply this. We know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. We are precious in the sight of the Lord. Go read Isaiah 43. He keeps us in the palm of his hand where no man can snatch us out. He watches over us. He says he'll give others in, in for our lives. He is with us always. He is always with us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You should have a perfect peace because of the love of God. No matter what situation you're in. And that should cause you to have faith rise up in you. And no, you don't have to have a self-concern, but you can be saying what's in is for you, Lord. And when you go out, wherever you go out, you should remember that you have the power to bring life because you have been entrusted with the love and the word of God. Oh, Well, by the way, we're talking about the schemes of the devil, and that's the purpose of the whole arm of God is to stand against these schemes. Um, we actually have a whole series up that we did a long time ago called The Schemes of the Devil. Mm-hmm. It's on the uh, Bible Talk website. And the purpose is that the schemes of the devil are very simply division, distraction, and disarmament. Yes. So go find out more about that at BibleTalk.com. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that you are a God of peace, that you yourself are our peace. And Lord, that we can walk with perfect confidence in you, that the victory is yours because the battle is yours. We just need to cheer you on, to praise you, sing your praises, Lord God, and you will go out and defeat the enemy. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the greatest gift of all your son, Jesus Christ, in our life. Well, God bless you. Until next week, and I hope to see you again then. Bye. Bye. I will play.